continue to be devil the education sector. The fact that some learners and instructors could be deaf and blind at the same time. Now, that is a condition that is widespread. Joining me for the discussion is Agnes Nampera, a Principal Rehabilitation Officer, Disability in the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development. Many thanks for joining us, uh, Ms. Nampera. Thank you very much. And uh, you're most welcome to Petra Amito, a communications officer at Sense International Uganda. Thank you, thank you. Thank First, you. take me through Petra Amito, the Deaf Blindness Awareness Week. Well, um, the Deaf Blindness Awareness Week is a week that consists of different activities to create awareness of dual sensory laws. Mm. Um, we're talking about the senses, and in this partic particular case, it's the deaf blindness. Mm. We have persons who are deaf blind, and in Uganda, we have uh, over 800,000 persons who are my who have mild deaf blindness so and it's ironic ironically it's not a condition that is known mm. so with the deaf blindness awareness week we strive to create this kind of awareness okay just a little bit more detail on uh, the condition and uh, when you speak of uh, numbers 800,000 is a bit uh, well is a damning assessment so to speak but we do know that somebody can be deaf but well they have their sight it's totally different and quite poignant to me when somebody is both deaf and blind the challenges are enormous there how yeah. are people adopting well it's quite rare for someone to be totally deaf mm. and totally blind. blind. Usually the, the beneficiaries that we have interacted with or come across usually have either one that is completely, or like for example, they could be completely deaf mm. and have very little sight or vice versa. Then, um, or it could be very little sight or mm. very little hearing. Mm. So, and this, this condition comes with very, very many enormous challenges. For the most enormous one is communication, yeah. because um, they are not like person. They are not like persons who can see and hear. Uh, we can speak. We can write. We can. Uh, we can see, but they cannot. So, as Sense International Uganda, yeah. our vision is of a world where we see that persons with deaf blindness can be equal and active members of the society. And we do this through four major models of our interventions. Um, the first one is the early intervention, where we have partnered with um, different health centers in some of the districts that we work with. We work in the central, in the um, east, and we might, and where in these, um, insti I mean, institutions where we partner with these hospitals yeah. or uh, medical facilities, we have created screening centers where um, children can go through the screening of here, the sensory screenings. And in these screenings, if they identify to have any kind of impairment, mm -hmm. then they are referred to different specialists that can at least help them um, to grasp, grasp what they can. Mm -hmm. With the early intervention, we can be able to at least save some kind of sensory some senses that they could have lost if they hadn't, hadn't gotten this mm. early intervention. Then from from here, we also have the our other second model of intervention, which is the ex inclusive education. Mm. And as I said, as I earlier said, persons with deaf blindness, children with deaf blindness, or multisensory impairments cannot easily communicate like the, 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 the way that we do. Okay. So in this inclusive education, we identify children using, part, using our partners. We partner with an organization called Uganda Parents of the Deaf Blind Children Association in Uganda, mm -hmm. where we go out in the, in the communities that we work in and identify these children. When these children are identified, we get their needs. For example, uh, and we, in this kind of model, we use a two-step model, a community-based community education model where if this child, uh, if their disability is so complex, we send out we send out um, teaching assistants or the special needs teachers to their homes to help them um, learn a few things like the activities of daily living, maybe brushing, um, trying to dress up, like things okay. that they can handle. All right, we shall of course be breaking that down a little bit uh, later. On the part of government, uh, Ms. Agnes Nampera, what is the state of affairs with regard to this particular uh, disability? 
Thank you, moderator. I would like to inform you that government provides services to all persons with disabilities, mm. including the deaf-blind persons, through a number of legal and policy frameworks, yeah. but also development programs that target all persons with disabilities, including the deaf-blind persons and their caregivers or parents. Mm. So we have the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda as the supreme law that gives the rights of all persons with disabilities, including the deaf-blind persons. Mm. Of course, the Persons with Disabilities Act 2020 also talks about inclus inclusive provision of all services of all persons with disabilities, including the deaf-blind. Mm. Then we are also a member of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities as Uganda. We ratified in 2008 mm. and talks about protection and promotion of the rights of all persons with disabilities and of course provision of services mm. so that is what government is doing okay uh miss uh, petra amito spoke about uh, 800,000 <laughs> sufferers i don't know whether that is the national figure but as the ministry of gender labor and social development i believe you're on top of this give us the picture who is suffering where and which particular region is perhaps most affected and what could be the causes that have been identified? Um, I wouldn't tell you which part of the country suffers most, okay. but I know that um, the persons with disabilities are all over the country. Mm. Who suffers most? The parents and caregivers of these children, even mm. before we go to the children. Okay. Why? Because of stigma and discrimination attached to disability. Mm. And this is even worse. Imagine a child who cannot properly see, who cannot properly talk. Of course, with our myths and beliefs mm. and stereotypes, then the mother will be a witch, then the father will have sacrificed someone, then the family of those people where they came from, their great-grandfathers had issues in their families. Mm. So yeah, the families suffer most. But then, of course, the children themselves, because um, the stigma does not only go to the families but to the children themselves. So even as they go through the lives of growing as from children transiting into adults, they suffer right from their families. I would like to tell you that because the families, the parents are stigmatized, mm. they tend to push the stigma to the children by, excuse me, by hiding them away from the community, the community yeah. by hiding them away from uh, refusing to take them to school, mm. refusing to take them to hospital when they get sick, mm. refusing to allow them grow like other children. So the children suffer a lot. Mm. And in so doing, the country suffers a lot because a, a lot of uh, resources that if that ch this child was uh, supported and had grown as another child, mm. then the the the, the, the the, the, the participation that they would in the development agenda of the country is of course left out. Mm. And I want to tell you, Mr. Moderator, that we have seen persons with deaf blindness who have, who have uh, come up and yeah, they have become sure. lawyers. Right. The chairperson of the National Council for Persons with Disabilities in Uganda is mm. a deaf blind person and is a lawyer by profession. Mm. And he's doing great things. So yeah, who suffers? That is it. That is what happens. In the end, the community suffers. In the end, the society suffers. In the end, the entire, entire country suffers. Okay. Yep. In the recent reading of the national budget, it was revealed that uh, taxes on uh, some of the equipment uh, that uh, most of uh, the sufferers of uh, such conditions use is going to be scrapped. I don't know, that's a question perhaps uh, that you would uh, like to tackle a little bit later. But let me stick with uh, Madame Nampera Agdes on the infrastructure in terms of rolling out services to victims and uh, people who care for some of these uh, uh, individuals. What is the policy framework around that? Are we seeing specific interventions or it's a case of uh, sector players again crying out to the government, can you please do this, can you do this? How are we rolling out the services infrastructure for them? Of course the services are multi-sectoral mm. in approach. The Ministry of Gender, we offer social economic interventions, mm -hmm. of course 
provided by government. Then we have the Ministry of Education and Sports for education, inclusive education, because it is the current intervention that is being done by government mm -hmm. to ensure that all the children go to school, mm -hmm. irrespective of their disability. Then, of course, the Ministry of Health mm -hmm. to ensure that they are given treatment, but also that the assistive devices are provided mm -hmm. in the different um, orthopedic workshops across the country. Mm -hmm. Then socially, to talk a little more, a number of gov government programs are in place. There is what is called the National Special Grant for Persons with Disabilities. Mm -hmm. It is a, a program that um, is accessible by persons with disabilities and their caregivers. So when we talk about the deaf-blind persons, especially those who are severely deaf-blind, mm -hmm. they are normally assisted by their parents or their caregivers. Could be relatives, could be good Samaritans. So they form groups, request for this funding from government it is an economic empowerment program. Mm. We, of course, government assesses, verifies if the program, I mean, if the project is not uh, environmentally or, uh, or uh, uh, economically unacceptable, mm. then they are provided. Mm. And we have seen, uh, they are provided with the funding, and we have seen persons with disabilities improving their livelihoods. Okay. Yes, then there are also a number of other programs. There is what we call community-based rehabilitation, mm -hmm. CBR. It is also a government intervention for equalization of opportunities for all persons with disabilities within their communities. And for CBR and the deaf-blind persons, mm -hmm. we go up to the individual homes, of course through the local government structures. Mm -hmm. Then you find these children, you assess them for medication, you assess them and recommend them for education. Then you of course, uh, support the family to ensure that they improve their livelihoods mm -hmm. through some economic empowerment programs to ensure that these persons are included in the development agenda and also that their livelihoods improve. Okay, uh, yes. thank you very much. Uh, now, as uh, a private uh, player in uh, these interventions, I hope uh, you are on board and uh, in harmony with uh, what the government is uh, rolling out. But before you answer that one, uh, what is the state of affairs with regard to assistive devices and access and even most importantly, cost? Um, I was actually quite excited that in the budget there is the uh, proposition of scrapping tax mm -hmm. on these assistive devices because as Sense International, we have provide we provide um, assistive devices to some of the to the children that we support, the ones that are in school. That's right. And usually, for example, we have a, a a new device that we are introducing in the country uh, called the Orbit Reader. It's it's it it it's, it's kind of like a game changer. Uh, from the traditional braille machine that the blind use. Mm. So this um, device is quite expensive. It's um, over $600. So yes, so when we get, we get the funding and we get the donors to give us these devices, we also get a challenge bringing them into the country. You find that we have to m keep running around between um, you, uh, around in URA trying to get these clearance, these clearances. But we, so far, we have gotten positive response from the government from URA because we have been able to get this tax ex exemption yeah. uh, for these devices. But then still, um, it's it's we are still excited that there is proposition that that ta the tax exemption will be scrapped off for these devices. Okay. Yes. Asha has spoken uh, very elaborately about uh, the various interventions that are uh, undertaken by the government. How true is that? Are you on board? Yes, we do work with, as I mentioned earlier, we work with mm -hmm. different partners and we also work with government. For example, um, we work, uh, one of our models, which is the livelihood model, mm -hmm. uh, here we train persons with deaf blindness or complex disabilities in livelihood skills for example and uh, for example tailoring courses bakery and the likes mm. and we have partnered with government institutions for example we have the Mpumude rehabilitation center in Jinja the Mafubia vocational the Mafubia community, community vocational training center mm. um, so here we have our beneficiaries enrolled in these institutions, the ones who can, who are able to learn the skills themselves, learn the skills. But the ones who are too complex, who have too, uh, complex disabilities, uh, disabilities too complex, we then identify a 
family member mm. to come and learn this skill on their behalf. And then when they go back, that's when they can be able to um, use these skills to make a livelihood. We also provide a start startup kits mm. to these families or these beneficiaries to help them come up with a livelihood, like businesses, so they can have some livelihood skills and some income. Okay, just another one for you. In case a three-year-old is deaf, blind, suffers autism, and has any other condition, what intervention does such a person have? Yes, so usually we have we do have children mm. under some of the projects who have who are deaf uh, deaf blind autistic some have down syndrome mm. um, uh, um, cerebral palsy so some of these conditions also cause the deaf blindness mm. so um, as you as you've said a three-year-old for a three-year-old here what we do is they would probably be ad under the early intervention or the inclusive ed education where we have in the early intervention when they have been screened and their issues have been identified then there they can be able to get the help that they need mm. as regards to their condition if that has been handled there is also the part where we uh, where we can attach this child with um SNE teacher or a teaching assistant who goes to their homes and helps and teaches them acti activities of daily learning yeah. so they learn in a really different way so these activities are more like repetitive repetitive so this teacher does home visits for about three three, three times a week yeah. um, and in these home visits they're not only working with a the child they're working with all family members so that when the teacher is not around the family members are also involved in helping this child develop okay yes uh, madam agnes nampera when within communities a person can't reach the private actors what are the what offices can someone reach where do they go to to access some of these uh, basically services but most importantly information on how to for example take care of uh, these uh, uh, sufferers okay thank you mr moderator mm. at uh, the national level they come to us at the ministry of gender labor and social development mm. they can go to ministry of education depending on the need mm. ministry of health then the national council for persons with disabilities mm. but uh, the structures are also um decentralized so they get we have the district community development officer mm. the community development officers at the sub county levels mm. where they get the information from then of course together with the ministry of health we are working with what they call the vhts yeah. to ensure that they can identify Those are village health uh -huh. yeah, teams yes to ensure that they can identify the persons with deaf blindness and other disabilities for onward referral and management. Okay. Then of course on what she said I wanted to add on what I forgot mm. that the program that trains the deaf blind girls mainly at Impumode is a government funded program. Mm. But of course we partner with uh, some organizations like theirs to come in and support where we cannot. But if they cannot go to Impumode and they are not uh, severely persons with deaf blindness mm. we also have other centers that train okay. in skills that is uh, we have one in uh, Rueza, we have one in chireka we have one in ruti and one in ochoko mm. so they are in five different centers in the country okay yeah. uh, unfortunately when explaining some of these uh, conditions there is uh, a pensive uh, tone to it mm -hmm. and uh, i usually want to associate the fact that uh, disability is not inability yep. some of these children are capable of so many things amazing things uh, putting uh, a few using the uh, assistive devices or any form of uh, communication that is created how is play for them and how do they adapt to play um, this deaf plan is being a multisensory impairment. Mm. Um, the kind of play that they get is play that stimulates their senses. Yeah. So, and with these teachers that, that the, the teachers or the occupational therapists that work with these children um, have these um, play materials. For example, 
play materials that are going to stimulate their senses. Yeah, for example, yeah. shakers for the ears, yeah. uh, play materials that have different textures that mm -hmm. they can probably identify from different uh, from di from the different toys, even with these learning or play materials, mm -hmm. can help them in different uh, different activities. For example, they'll know this material is smooth, and yeah. this is how it feels like. It feels so when like. I touch a cup, this is how it's going to feel like, and I know I have to drink from this cup. I, we also we have also um, taught these teachers mm -hmm. on how to make these play materials, and the teachers then go back to the families to mm -hmm. teach to teach these families how to make this play and learn materials. Do we have materials. sports material that is made specifically for some of them that they can touch and know this is perhaps a ball, this is a piece of, uh, you know, I want to understand that whole process and how it plays out. I don't know whether there is a specific government <laughs> uh, framework for that or not, but there is an aspect I need to know that if you walk into a room and it's a training center or a care facility for these children, yes. you can feel that attitude of right now I think it's time for play and how is it going on? What is the atmosphere there? So the atmosphere for these children is more like as I said mm. they work on routine. So mm. if they know in the morning I'm going to wake up mm. um, for, before I before I get into that, let me talk about the communication with these children. Oh, we use very a quickly. yeah we use yeah. a tactile form of communication. This Ta is more of like t of touch. touch. For example, um, if I have a, ch a child with such complex disability, in the morning I wake them up. They know um, it's routine. I, when I when I wake up, I'm going to go and brush my teeth. I'm going to do this. Mm. After that, I'm going to get dressed, have breakfast. After breakfast. I'm going to go somewhere like my play area mm. where I'll have my play materials. Now, for example, like a ball, um, we can you can be able to use the locally made balls and the, where where they will know. Oh, this is All a right. ball. All oh, right, very and quickly. I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap this up. Just, uh, Madame Agnes Napera, quickly the awareness week. Where are events going to be? What are you guys going to be doing? And. Uh, everything around the awareness week or oh, it's a question for a question specifically for, for her. her. Yes. All right. Mm. Make it very brief. Yes, the awareness week, this is one of the activities that we're doing. We're mm. also going to have a press conference at mm. our offices um, tomorrow. Uh, plus we uh, we have all plus we've also had radio talk shows. Mm -hmm just to spread awareness on deaf blindness. Okay, now the awareness week of course is the beginning, it, it's already underway? Yes, it begins on 27th to mm -hmm. 3rd July. And 3rd July. July. So there's a lot of activity that is going to go on. A press conference is due and of course a communication will be made on the various uh, media platforms that uh, officials including you two will be engaging. Many thanks Agnes Nampera, an official from uh, the Ministry of Gender, Labour and uh, Social Development as well as uh, Petra Amito for that uh, particular insight on a condition that is widespread and I hope the information shared